Tom. Yeah. How are you? I'm really well. I've got very tired legs today. <laughs> I, I did, I, I did uh, uh, leg exercises okay. in the gym yesterday. And I was all kind of feeling very full of myself <laughs> uh, yesterday. And now today I'm paying for it big time. <laughs> So not too much walking around today? No, no, I went in a kind of searingly hot bath okay. just before doing this interview and uh, it didn't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what I want to do a little bit is, is I wrote a bunch of the lyrics from the album down and sure. I want to go through it and then and see Great. if we can, can capture the story. So, so the first uh, little bit is from uh, The River where you mentioned teenage dreams of conquering the world. Mm. If we go back to your teenage years, do you remember when that started to, to manifest itself? Yeah, well, I think what that, I mean, the song is, that song particularly is about nostalgia and mm. how, you know, I've found as I've got older, there's just been this growing sense of, oh, the good old days, you mm. know, when I was a kid or when I was a teenager and, and exactly as you say, it felt like, oh, I, I want to conquer the world. And I think that's where a lot of young people feel, you know, mm -hmm. it's me against the rest of the world and I'm, sure. and I'm and it's full of this energy. And so, yeah, I do remember that time, you know, I, we were putting Keen together as a, as a band mm -hmm. and we were idolizing the Beatles and U2 and Radiohead and, and these bands. And we just wanted to take them on, you know, we wanted mm -hmm. to be the same. Um, and although we were rubbish you know we were really rubbish at that time it was still very exciting mm. um, but I mean in the context of that song you know for me I've learned actually that 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 nostalgia and that desire to go back to the past is mm. totally unhelpful okay it's kind of crippling mm. and you and I think it's the reason why a lot of it seems to be a lot of men particularly have a kind of midlife crisis mm. it's like Ah, how can I be young again? How can I get back to the good old days? And the fact is, is that they're gone, you know, sure. and you have to deal with what you've got right now and deal with the present. But when you had that mentality of, of conquering the world, obviously you wouldn't know kind of what, what that would entail, how, how that would um, go. So, so how did you find, as, as, as Keen started to take off, how did you find, how well, did you experience that? I experienced it in a very... Uh, extreme way, I suppose, okay. um, in as much as, on one hand, so much of it was so exciting, intoxicating, mm. you know, uh, because we really went from being complete nobodies to playing to half empty rooms, not even half empty, <laughs> eighth empty, <laughs> whatever. It was, it was um, you know, it was very depressing. And we went from that to, you know, a, a year after Hopes and Fears came out, we were playing at Live 8, you know, in front of, well, billions of people watching sure. on the TV. And, you know, we had kind of conquered many parts of the world with that first record. It was really, it was a very exciting time. So on one hand, I had all of that. Um, and actually at the same time, I met my now wife, okay. you know, and that was very exciting too. Our relationship kind of was, in its very early stages and mm. taking off. So that was really amazing. But the flip side of it was that actually, I think I was a very unhappy person. Okay. I felt very self-conscious, you know. Um, I put a lot of weight on. I started taking too many drugs. Um, and, you know, there was a part of me that really hated myself and hated mm. where I'd ended up, which was actually, for someone who feels self-conscious, being on this <laughs> massive yeah. stage sure. was terrifying. So I remember it, you know, as a very weird time, you know, a time of, of two real extremes. But that self-consciousness that you mentioned, was it about the music, about your own ability, or...? Um, no, it was it was it was deeper than that. Okay. It ran deeper. The roots of it, I think, were went all the way back to being a teenager. I think okay. feeling kind of body conscious. Mm. Um, I think also, you know, I was always uh, until very recently, I, I've always been very crippled by my emotional world. You know, not very good at dealing with how mm. I feel. 
um, I've always, I was all, well, I was always an avoidant person. I used to isolate myself, I used to want to be, try and deal with my problems on my own. And that's a very lonely existence. Mm. Um, so yeah, those, those things I think were the reason I found that time so hard. And, well, because the band was doing really well at that mm. point. So, in, in a sense, what, what's, what was that like? Because on the one hand, you're, you're doing really well, but mm. then in, in, you have some, some inner turmoil. So, mm. so how do you push on? What? Well, in a way, we didn't really push okay. on because we got to the end of Hopes and Fears and touring that record. And around that time was when I first kind of had a complete meltdown. Mm. Um, and, you know, I flew home from a tour in Japan without telling anyone. Uh, I locked myself in my house for like a week and just took a load of drugs uh, and no one could really get hold of me. Mm -hmm. And I ended up in rehab, you know, and it got all in the newspapers in the UK and um, it was a really, just a really horrible time. And everything ground to a halt, you know. Tim was trying to write the next Keen record. Uh, I wasn't interested in anything other than either getting wasted or trying to get well, you know. Um, and it was a very, yeah, it was a very weird and tricky time. What, what role did music play in, in this part of your life? Did you still enjoy going on stage? And um, I can't remember, okay. actually. Yes, I think I did. I think I, I mean, I think that's the thing about singing and mm -hmm. performing. Um, I remember particularly when I came out of rehab, that in, back in, it would have been 2005 or six. anyway, I, mm -hmm. I can't quite remember. Yeah, 2006. And, you know, I was pretty fragile at that point. I'd been mm -hmm. locked away for four or five weeks. Um, and I kind of didn't know what to expect from the world when I kind of emerged. And basically went, got straight on a tour bus and went straight to a venue and played a gig in Hull in the north of England. Mm -hmm. And um, was kind of met with this sense of real genuine love and affection from the fans and felt very happy mm -hmm. singing and being on stage for the rest of the time. Sure. Yeah, not really. And around this time, you mentioned 2006, uh, around this time, were you already in your mind busy with, with, a, with the solo album? Did you, did you mm. think about it? I did, actually. It's funny you should mention that, because one of the things I did when I stopped and I went into rehab mm. was I started writing music right. again. It was the first time I'd done that in quite a few years, because th the thing with Keen was that Tim wrote the songs, you know, and he had done since the time of hopes and fears. And so that part of me that where I wrote songs and was creative, I kind of shut that down. Mm. It was interesting, as soon as I went into drug rehabilitation and started talking about my problems, suddenly songs started to mm. flow out of me and I had this desire to create again. So, um, yeah, um, you know, I wasn't really thinking about a solo album then, but, uh, but I certainly, you know, had got creative once more. Right. But unfortunately, you know, the years went by and I pushed that part of me back down again. Mm, not going there. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't until recently really that I began to properly consider it. Because of the, we'll, we'll move uh, along a little bit uh, quicker, but after Strangeland then, mm. was it immediately, immediate, immediately your intention of, of, of doing a solo record? Did you know you were going to take a break and... and well, in I think it would have been January of 2013. We were touring Strangeland and we were out in America. And I just remember one day I woke up and I thought, I don't really want to do this anymore. Mm. I, w well, like, I, I thought, it wasn't that I hated it, it sure. was just that I thought I could carry on doing this forever, but is it really what I want, you know, and is it, is it going to help to kind of articulate this stuff that I had inside me? You know, it would have been an easy life just to keep doing mm. that. But 
it wouldn't have been the challenge that I needed. So I remember just waking up one day and thinking, do you know what, I actually, you know, w want something else. I want to set myself a new challenge. And I thought, and I said to the guys, do you know what, I, I think we need to put the brakes on Keen and I want to do a solo record. Mm -hmm. um, and that was tough for them, I think, to hear. But, um, you know, I'd already, the wheels were already in motion. I already mm -hmm. felt like that was what I wanted to do. Did you already have ideas then? Because, like you say, in 2006, you, the creative brain started mm. working again. So did you have an idea of...? To, yeah, that year, uh, on the road, I started writing again. We always had a music room on the road with Keen, so you'd have one, one of the dressing rooms, you'd just turn it into a music room. And I remember spending a lot of time in there writing, writing songs and, you know, thinking, can't wait till I get home, get off the road, mm -hmm. and I can start actually making this a reality, you know, actually mm -hmm. um, doing this solo album that I've kind of thought about very vaguely over and over again sure. over the years, but never actually committed to. Mm 